This is Algebra 2, Lesson 1.5, Loans and Investments. We are going to continue our work with shifted geometric sequences, but we're going to use them specifically in financial situations. So if you're going to write the formula for a loan, we're going to start with our u sub n equals u sub n minus 1, just like we normally would, multiply and in parentheses, 1 plus whatever the percent, the annual percent change is, divided by n. n is going to stand for our number of compounding per year. And then we're going to subtract our payment amount. An investment looks almost exactly the same. We're going to start with our u sub n equals u sub n minus 1, just like we usually do. And we're going to, again, multiply by 1 plus whatever our annual percent rate is, divided by our number of compoundings per year. And in this situation, we're going to add our deposit amount. So loans are when you borrow money and then pay them back. That's why we have a subtraction amount here, because we're going to pay back whatever we borrowed. Whereas an investment is where you save money, you're earning money, you're adding to what you have. So we're going to add a deposit amount. That's really the only difference between the two formulas, whether we're adding or whether we're subtracting. Now I mentioned N stands for compounding, and that number can change based on the situation. So if you're given an annual situation, that means N is 1. Compounds once per year, that's annual. N is 2, if it's semi-annual, that means twice per year or every six months. Um, more common we're going to see is 12. That's probably the most common one. That's if we compound once per month. So if you're making a monthly payment or a monthly deposit to your savings account. You can also see n equals 4 for quarterly. That happens with a lot of savings accounts where they would pay you interest quarterly. Um, you can say n equals 52 for weekly. There's 52 weeks in a year. And occasionally you would see daily, it would be n equals 365, but these are the basic ones that we're going to be using. And then principal is one more new word, and that is fancy talk for u0. Basically our starting amount, how much we initially deposit or initially borrow. That's our principal or our u0 value. Okay, so let's scroll down and try a couple of examples. First example A says, you plan to borrow $22,000 from a bank to purchase a new car. You will make monthly payments for five years, which is 60 months, and the bank charges an annual rate of 7.9% compounded monthly. Assuming you make a $300 payment each month, write a recursive formula to represent the situation. So I'm gonna start with U sub zero for our principal or initial amount and that is $22,000. And then we're going to write our general term, u sub n equals u sub n minus 1, just like we always start our rules, times 1 plus. Now in this situation, we're going to take our percent, our annual percent, but we're going to convert that to a decimal. So remember, 7.9% is the same as 0.079. You have to move that decimal two places, fill in that spot with a zero. And then we're also going to be compounding monthly. That means n equals 12, so I'm going to divide by 12. And finally, I'm making a $300 payment, so I'm going to be subtracting my payment amount. So if I borrow $22,000 to start, I'm, I'm uh, getting charged interest on that, but then I'm making $300 payments on that. How much do you still owe after one year? So I'm going to have to open up my calculator for this one. And we're going to seed our calculator just like we usually do, putting in our U0, and then we hit Enter. And that allows us to do this recursively. So I'm going to put in my U0 and hit enter. Whoa, I got a lot of stuff here I don't need. How about that? And then we're going to multiply by 1 plus our ratio, 
compounding monthly, and we're also going to subtract our monthly payment. And then every time I hit enter, that's one month goes by. So enter again is two months went by. And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Every time I hit enter, it's like one month going by. So if I'm trying to get to one full year, that's 12 months. So after 12 months of getting charged interest and making payments, I still owe $20,069.08 on my car. How many months will it take to pay off the loan? So this one's kind of silly in this situation. I'm going to have to keep hitting enter and counting until I reach zero dollars. That's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. This is two years of making payments, and I still haven't paid off my loan. 23. 5, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Now originally I said that this was a five year or 60 month loan. So this has already been four years now. 48 months is four years. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. So you can say after 60 months or five years, I still haven't finished paying off my loan. I'm not going to keep going, but I think it's around 108 months that we finally hit a zero dollar balance. So if you have the patience to actually count that out, find the answer, let me know. Example B says, you plan to buy a house. You have been approved for a 30-year mortgage oops, too far, of $146,000 with monthly payments of $995.98 and an annual interest rate of 7.25% compounded monthly. Write a recursive formula to represent the situation. So I need my principal, my U0, my starting amount. I am borrowing $146,000, so that's my starting amount. I'm going to write my general term. We're always going to start with our un equals u sub n minus 1. And then in my parentheses, 1 plus, because we are adding interest to our balance before we make our payments. We have a 7.25% rate. Converting that into a decimal, I have 0 0.0725. We're compounding monthly, so I'm going to divide by 12. And then we're making monthly payments of 995.98, so we're going to subtract from our balance our payment amount. So I don't actually ask you to use this to calculate a value. I just want to make sure we can write the formula. Now we're actually going to calculate how much you actually pay for the house. So if I'm making 30 years worth of payments and I'm paying once a month, if I do 30 times 12, that means I'm actually making 360 payments. And if I do my 360 payments times my payment amount, 995.98, this will tell me how much I actually pay for my house. So I'm going to jump over to my calculator. 360 payments times 995.98. Oops, 360, 99598 means that I'm actually paying $358,552.80 for my house. So I bought a house that cost $146,000 and I ended up paying almost $200,000 more over 200000 more than the house actually cost. All that extra money went to the bank that lent me the money in the first place. Okay, we have one final example. Gwen's employers offer an investment plan that invests a portion of each paycheck before taxes are deducted. 
Glenn gets paid every day. The plan has an annual interest rate of 4.75% compounded weekly, and she decides to contribute $10 each week. We're going to write a formula. First, we need our U0. Since this is a brand new account, there's no money in this account, so our starting value is $0. But we're going to add money to it in this investment. So whatever value is in there is going to earn some interest. Since we are earning 4.75%, we're going to convert that to a decimal. Remember, move that decimal to places, fill in your zeros. And since we are compounding weekly, that means n is 52, because there are 52 weeks in one calendar year. And we are adding $10 to our account each week, so we're going to do a plus 10 at the back there. And then we're going to find her balance after five years. Now, this is another one where I'm not actually going to do it. And if you have the patience to do it, you can, but I'm going to show you how you would do it. So we're going to start with our $0 in our account. And then we are going to add our interest to that. Is it 475 or 425? 475. And we're compounding weekly. And we're going to add $10 to our account every week. So the reason I'm not going to do this for five years is because, remember, every time I hit enter, that means one week went by. This would be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks. Ten weeks. I'd have to hit enter 52 times to get to one year. And 52 times five times, 52 times five, I'd have to enter 260 times to get to my five-year balance. So... I'm just going to write that down, U260, 5 times 52 is 260. And if you have the patience to do that, you should. I will not ask you to go that high on any assignment or test question, though. Um, I think something in the the under 100 range would be reasonable, somewhere in the 20, 40, 50, 60 range, but hitting enter 260 times really doesn't have any value. So that's it for the notes. Um, good luck on the exercises, and please let me know if you have any questions.